So this is an interesting one. This is a modular and entropic line Sudoku posted by Philip Newman in GAS on February 16th, 2024. And before we start, I'm going to take a little bit of time to talk about these constraints because they are line constraints that have some implications that even though I think that they are clear and kind of quote unquote obvious enough that they're fair to use in GAS, I don't think they're necessarily like trivially obvious if you're not thinking about them, which I can tell you the first time I saw a constraint like this, I was not thinking about them. So I'm going to kind of spoil something for you. So first of all, what are the constraints? So these horizontal teal lines that fill the entire grid, these are modular lines. And along a modular line, every set of three digits has to have one digit from one, four, and seven, one digit from two, five, and eight, and one digit from three, six, and nine. And the reason they're called modular lines is because those groups of digits have the same value when you take them modulo three. So one, four, and seven, when you divide them by three, they all have a remainder of one. Two, five, and eight, when you divide them by three, they all have a remainder of two. And three, six, nine, when you divide them by three, they all have a remainder of zero. I would not be surprised if I just said something completely wrong there, but mathematically, I think the reasoning is sound. <laughs> um, and the rule is that every set of three adjacent digits, like including overlapping ones, has to have one of each kind of modularity group. And that implies something that was not completely clear to me the first time I saw one of those puzzles, so I'm going to spoil it for you now, which is that there will always be along the line a repeating pattern of like group one, group two, group three, group one, group two, group three, group one, group, group, group two, group three, or something like that. Like the ordering could be different, but the ordering will always be in a repeating pattern. And the reason that happens is so this is from like group one. So suppose the next digit was from say group three. So let's make it a three. And then in order to fulfill the rule, the next digit would have to be from group two. And now if you look at this overlapping set of three adjacent digits, we have one from group three, we have one from group two, so now we need one from group one in order to fulfill the rule on this set of three. So now in this set of three, we have one from group two, one from group one, so now we need something from group three. Here we have one from group one, one from group three, and now we need something from group two, and so on. So now we're doing group one, three, two, one, three, two, and so on. So there will always be a repeating pattern like that. It won't always be in that exact order, but once you've identified like three digits to get started with, that pattern always has to exist. Same thing is true for the other type of lines in this puzzle. So the other type of lines here are entropic lines. Those are the peach lines that are going vertically. And along those, it's the exact same rule, except instead of grouping the digits based on what their modulus is, we are grouping them based on whether they're low, medium, or high. So low digits are one, two, three, medium digits are four, five, six, high digits are seven, eight, nine. And same rule about every set of three adjacent digits having to have one from each group. And same implication about always having to have a repeating pattern of like low, medium, high, low, medium, high, low, medium, high. So if you want, you can just understand the entropic lines rule, not as anything fancy about adjacent digits, but just as about a rule about having a repeating pattern. Like you could easily just read that rule as saying, Along an entropic line, there always has to be a consistent repeating pattern of like low, medium, high, low, medium, high, or like low, high, medium, low, high, medium, and so on. And that's kind of how we're going to treat it as we solve this. This puzzle I also respect is a little visually overwhelming. I'm going to, before Philip pushes, <laughs> before Philip publishes this, I'm maybe going to push him a little bit to um, include some kind of like notation that will appear right next to the grid while you're solving to remind you of which one is which between vertical and horizontal. I'm just going to do my best to keep it straight in my head while I'm doing the solve. Let's get started. So let's take a look at these entropic lines. So we know that we have this repeating pattern of sets of three digits. We have a high digit here. So these are going to be low and medium in some order, and that's going to be high. These are going to be low and medium in some order, and that's going to be high. So these are my two high digits. Here, low digit, and then doot doot low digit, doot, doot, low digit. Um, that's how we're going to do this. So the, the, the shortcut, like the rule of thumb, is that uh, if you have a low digit on an entropic line, the digits that are three away from it and six away from it will also be low digits just because of how the pattern works. So this is high, 
We're going to go three away from that, and that's also high. We're going to go three away from that, and that's also high. Four is medium, so we're going to go three away, and that's medium also. And we're going to go three away, and that's medium also. Same thing here. These are going to be medium. Same thing here. These are going to be medium. This is low, so we go three away, and we have another low digit. We go three away, and we have another low digit. High, three away. That's another high digit, and this is another high digit. Low, three away, that's a low digit, and that's a low digit. And that doesn't seem to have given us much, but there should, I hope, be an interaction between that and the modular digits. Let's have a little look. So let's say we look here, same idea along this line. This is going to have to have the same modularity as one, because it's three away, and this is also going to have to have the same modularity as one. So this is going to be a four, seven pair because the two other digits in the same group is one or four and seven. Oh, but we've already used seven in this column. So that has to be a four and that has to be a seven. In fact, we've also already used four in this column. Here, this cell and this cell will have to have the same modularity as two. So that will be a five, eight pair. In this column, we've already used five and six. So that will be an eight. In this column, we've already used seven and eight. So that will be a five. Three, this will have the same modularity, and so will this. So that will be a 6-9 pair, but we've already used an 8-9 pair here, so that's our 6, and that's our 9. These two will have the same modularity as 4, because they're 3 away from the 4 in our pattern, but we've already used a 7-8 pair in this column, so that's now a 1, and that is a 7. These cells will have the same modularity as 5, so that will be a 2-8 pair. We have an 8-9 pair in this column, that makes that a 2 and makes that an 8. And I'm just going to kind of repeat, continue using the exact same type of deduction. Here I've got a 7-9 pair, making that a 3. And I'm just going to keep walking through that until I've filled in some digits in every single row. So these are going to be a 1-4 pair. These guys are going to be a 2-5 pair, and I can resolve that. And these are going to be a 3-6 pair, and I can resolve that. Now let's go vertical again. I now know that the low digits are here and here in this column, because this is a 1, which is a low digit. So that's a 2, 3. And this 3 tells me which way around they go. And my medium digits go here and here. The 4 tells me which way around they go. This column, I have my low digits already. Now I know where to place my medium digits. That'll be a 6, and that'll be a 5. And I know where to place my high digits, 7 and 9. The 9 resolves all of this, so let's kind of finish up this stack by cleaning up our pencil marks. 4 tells us uh, we already know that that's got to be a 6, and that has to be a 5, and this has to be 2 and 1. Now we have a 5 and a 3 in this row, so that makes this a 6 and a 2 and a 3. Uh, our 6 gives us a 4 here and a 5. These are going to be 8 and 9, so we'll make that an 8-9 pair. And because this is a modular line, the 9 has to be 2 away from the 6, which puts it right there. Let's keep going vertically, though, because I'm a little bit more comfortable personally with entropic lines, and I imagine that's true for a lot of you guys, too. So 8, the high digits will have to be in those two positions, so this will be a 7 and a 9. The low digits will be in these two positions, so that'll be a 1 and a 2. The 6 makes this a 5. This column, our high digits will be in these positions, so that will be a 7 and an 8. We've got our medium digits already. That's now a 6, and we need to place a 3 and a 2. That's a 4 because of the 5 in the region. That's going to be a 1. This is going to be a 3 and a 9. I think this puzzle is, um, it has a really interesting conceit. Like, I feel like it's the kind of idea that you can only really get one puzzle out of, necessarily. Just this, like, kind of grid of overlapping. Because it kind of feels like it resolves itself in, like, a really natural, like, really necessary way. But I think that one puzzle is a fun and cute and satisfying puzzle, and I'm glad that Philip has shared it with us. So these are going to be 6 and 8. That's a 4, that's a 1, and that's a 5. Fantastic, and that's how you solve Philip Newman's Entropic and Modular Lines Sudoku. I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope that you learned a little bit about these interesting constraints.